What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. We got a full on video here guys, round 13. We've had a couple of complications with the buyers being changed, so we're going to cover that along with what rookies I recommend you guys target this week. Couple of options if you've got Sean Darcy, and then I'm going to give you my best upgrade targets for this week as well. So kick back and enjoy the video. So we'll jump straight into buys. What's the go? So we've had news emerge this week that West Coast and Richmond will be moving forward to this week. They will be playing. So what that means for you guys is that if you've got West Coast and or Richmond players in your fantasy side, they will not be on the buy this week. They have been moved from a round 13 buy to a round 14 buy. And as a result, we've been given one extra trade in round 14 to compensate. So this is a pretty big deal. It means that you're gonna have more players available this week, but then in round 14, where a lot of sides were already pretty heavy, they now have two extra teams to deal with in that buy round. So I just wanted to start the video off by saying this, a lot of teams are gonna struggle next week, and that's why it's super important to Know that you've got that extra trade now, but to also use the three trades you have this week to get your side in a better position. A lot of people are complaining about how they're not going to be able to manage their buy rounds because of this, but the reality is you guys still have seven trades to make that work, so you should be able to get 18 on the field at a bare minimum if you'd planned reasonably well before the start of all of this. So... Now that that's out of the way, we're going to jump into a couple of Sean Darcy options. Darcy obviously went down with a hamstring this weekend. Not ideal, as a lot of owners did bring him in this week. I think there's limited options, and the first one being Max Gorn. If you don't have Max, get on. Get on now. You need to have him and Grundy in your side, so... With Grundy being out, it makes it easy. You get Gorn now, you get Grundy when he's back, and then you don't have to worry about it. I probably wouldn't be looking at many other options at all if you don't have Gorn. So that's the number one priority. The next guy is Riley O'Brien. I did recommend him last week as an option to get. He's coming back into form. He's starting to hit some of those scores that we saw him achieve last year. I think that he's certainly an option at the price. It does give you 100k, so you can potentially do something with that. But the only reason I'm not 100% sold on him as an option is just the fact that, one, he still has to have the buy as well. So you're essentially just adding more pressure into that round 14 round. And along with that, like I said, you're going to need Gorn and Grundy. So if you bring in a guy like Riley O'Brien, you're only going to be using another trade in a few weeks' time to get him up to Grundy. So that's just something to consider there. You've already used a trade to get Darcy in, most likely. And then you're going to be using a trade to get Rob in and a trade to get Rob out. So there's a lot of trades going on there. Which leads me to the third option. This is probably the one I like the most if you don't have Max Gorn, and that's to either bring Reeves in via a rookie. So say you do a rookie downgrade, you get Reeves in, and then I'd be looking to hold Darcy on the bench over the next couple rounds and play Reeves on the field. Reeves, in my opinion, looks like the must-have rookie this round. I think you guys need to get on. He looks like he's got plenty of cash. His job security should be very solid, in my opinion. Hawthorne look like they're rebuilding. They're looking to develop another ruck with McAvoy on the way out and Segler 
obviously proving to be no good over the last few years. So I quite like Reeves as an option. His scoring should be all right. And then by doing that, you're essentially keeping Darcy, who you can then easy step up to Grundy. So you're saving yourself a trade there. Plus, it's not that much cash to do that move. So that's why I like that move. You could also go Darcy all the way down to Reeves. That gets you a stack of cash, which you can use to then upgrade to some of these guys, some of these top tier premiums coming off the buy. So we'll get into those guys in a second, but I'm not as fond of this move. It is still a good option, but then you've got a lot of cash you need to grab from somewhere to then get Grundy later. So that's my opinion on the Sean Darcy issues. I think the best option's gone and then potentially bring Reeves in and use him to cover for Darcy for the next two rounds. As for what rookies I recommend this round, if you don't have Trent Bianco, then you must be living under a rock, guys. He's the number one guy. He looks consolidated in that Collingwood side and in a side that's been pretty poor, he's actually been one of their better players over the last two weeks. So he's an absolute must-have, dual position as well, ticks every box. If you don't have him, get him now. The next guy is Ned Reeves. We were just talking about him. I am expecting him to get named this week, and I do expect that he will play quite a few games, and he should generate a lot of cash. So the only potential downside with Reeves is that you might not be able to get him on the field. If you've already got Riley O'Brien and Gorn like I do, then he won't be an added score into your best 18 players. But I think he's worth having regardless as he's going to generate too much cash not to have. And he also does give you cover for one of those two guys during the buys in round 14. So he's my number two option. Number three, we have Joel Lamardi for the Swans. Look, surprised me, to be honest, on the weekend. I thought he was quite good. He was very good in the air. He did pinch hit in the ruck at times to give Hickey a chop out. I think that going forward, his job security should be okay. Sinclair has obviously proven to be pretty wasted. He's not that good. And the same deal applies for Hayden McLean as well. So I think they're going to use Marty after what he showed in the first game. He should at least get a few more games. But in saying that, he does have the bye in round 14. So he does only get that one game before he has a rest. And then you never know if they're going to come back after the bye. So that's a little concern. That's kind of the same concern I have with everyone on this list. Apart from Bianco, he should continue to play, and Reeves, who's already had the bye, hence why he's a super option. The next guy we have is Edwards. West Coast are very short on midfield depth. I think that he should be able to string a couple games together. And then we have Luke Foley as well. So both these West Coast guys I'm a little less hot on, purely for the fact that, like I stated, they'll play this week, but then they'll have the bye, and then it looks like West Coast will have a lot of potential guys coming back after the bye. We're looking at Jeremy McGovern, Liam Duggan, Luke Shuey, Tim Kelly. These guys won't be too far away. So it is a little bit of a concern for those guys. You might only get a couple weeks worth of cash generation. But they do look like they will be able to score in the roles that they've currently got. So I do think that they could be worth bringing in. But that's why they sit at... Four and five and not up near the top of the list. So those are the guys I'd be looking at this week. We could potentially see a couple rookies named. If you're holding on to Meek or Hunter, they could get a game this week. Despite how poor he was, St Kilda just have absolutely no players available. So we could see Highmore come back in. Finlay McRae could come in at the expense of Jay Rantel. I expect Ronan O'Connor to go out of the side. And we could see debutant in Joel Weston for Frio, potentially. I probably wouldn't be jumping on him, as we do have a lot of good guys available this week. But he's just one to monitor. Alright, so as for trade targets this week, guys, I've got a lot of them. I've got a lot of names I want to get through. So, as you can see, here's my list of players 
I'm going to go quick fire. If I miss anyone, let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you with my thoughts and opinions on what I think of those guys. But starting off, we have Tuke Miller for the Suns. Very expensive, has been in super form. A lot of people are looking at him as a unique option, which I'm fine with. I don't mind paying up for a unique guy at this stage of the competition, but my only concern is that Matt Rao looks like he will be back this week, so you'd think that negatively impacts his scoring. And at that price, I'd probably prefer to stay away. So he's one that I probably wouldn't be targeting. Next, we have Mitch Duncan, similar in price, but I sit with a little bit of a different opinion on this one. I think that you can pay that much for him despite his break even being high. He has a super high ceiling. He tends to hit big 130 plus scores on a regular basis and his current break even is achievable by his standard. Because of his concussion, some people have held him but a lot of people that did have him do not own him anymore so he's unique ability is super high so I really like Duncan as a target if you can afford him. Cam Guthrie is another one similar price tag but because he's coming off the shoulder injury I'd probably prefer to go with Duncan over Guthrie. Tom Mitchell bit cheaper than these guys he's about 100k 70k cheaper he's in poor form Hawthorne are struggling at the minute. They look like they're going to prioritise development and pack up shop for the year. So we could see some versatility with his role potentially. He could see less time at CBAs. There's also rumours floating around that he might be interested in leaving and going to another club. So I have a couple of queries with Tom Mitchell. I think he should be pretty solid for the rest of the year, but I don't think he's going to hit those high levels that we've seen in the past and with his ownership already being reasonably high a lot of the top sides already have him i'd potentially be looking elsewhere at some other premiums that have a bit lower ownership they could potentially output the same or have a better output over the rest of the year so that's my thoughts on tom mitchell i do think that he's still an option if you like him paddy dangerfield could potentially be back this week I'd probably just wait a week on him. One, he's going to drop a little bit of coin, you'd think. You'd think that he's going to be a very good forward, probably a top two, top three, but we don't know where he's at, what his fitness is going to be like, what his role is going to be like. So I'd just wait a week on Paddy Dangerfield first. Christian Petraka. Getting to a buy price now, but I'd prefer to wait just because he does have the buy. So a lot of these other guys I'm going to cover now have not had the buy yet. And therefore, I'd be a little bit more tentative to go with them. I think that you want to be targeting guys coming off the round 12 buy this week because they're going to be there for you for the rest of the buys. There's no headaches there. Plus, there's also some really good options in that tier so I will be covering my top five trade targets in a second but Lockie Neal one to keep an eye on he should be under 700k very shortly everyone knows what sort of ability he has so he's one to monitor then we have Crouch for St Kilda look he's been in great form he's pumping out some good scores 127 on the weekend we know he's got a ceiling He's a little bit inconsistent, but I think that he's still an option. He also is unique, and he is a little bit cheaper than some of the other guys I've mentioned. A lot of the value that was there has now gone. He was in that 650k price range, so I did say then that he was an option. If you got on board, then well done. He's been a great pick, but I think that you can potentially still look at him now, although there are some other options around. Steel side bottom, one of the better forward options available. Collingwood, you never know. There's a lot going on there with roles, with the fact that they're trying to develop younger players. I'm not sure what his role is going to be for the rest of the season, which is a slight query, but he is a top quality player. There's not too many decent forwards available, so he's one of the better ones. But like I said, he does have the bias still to come. 
Christian Salem's an interesting one. He was at about 720, 740. I know he was definitely over 700k, but his last two scores have been uh, 60 and 50 odd. So he's dropped a lot of value. He's got a very high break even. He's currently priced around 650k, but he looks set to go lower. He does have a super high ceiling, which is a huge tick for defenders. So that's why I'm mentioning him. He could be one that you pick up in a few weeks' time that could really help you to set yourself apart and boost yourself up the ranks if he does come back and hit some solid form. Sean Higgins is a popular one that's been thrown around. I don't really like this option. His form's been great, but Geelong just have way too many numbers coming back. I expect a role change, and I expect his scoring to decrease. Dusty, I've been mentioning him for weeks now. He's still at a buy price. Get on board if you like him. Scotty Pendles, looks like he's changed role again to a halfback position. Looks much better suited here. He's one that could be a super target. I'd watch him this week, let him rest over the buy, and then he could be in for a big second half of the year. So I'd probably target after the buys, but he's certainly at a great price. And his new halfback role, if that's to continue, I can see that being very beneficial for his fantasy output. Then we have Nick Haynes. Great option in my opinion. He will be one in my top five targets this week, but I think Haynes... Super cheap, priced at 62. We know that he can go at least mid-70s, but based off last year, he's shown potential that he can average high 80s even. So it looks like GWS are getting back to a pretty full-strength squad, which should see him play that intercepting role at half-back where we know he can score well. I think there's lots of value here, and he's very easy to get to from a rookie. So I think he's a great target this week. Matty Rao will be talked about, but the reality is Gold Coast will manage his minutes, so I wouldn't jump on this week. I'd monitor this week, see what his game time's like, see what his role is like. I'm expecting that he will just go straight into the midfield and play on ball, but coming off injury, he could only play 60% game time, which then warrants not owning him. So, I wouldn't take the risk this week. Keep an eye on, but he could be a great target at a very cheap price next week. Dan Houston, one that I really like, one that I'm personally jumping on board this week. I think the value there is too good to ignore. He's priced at 80. I think he comfortably averages 90, probably more like 95 for the rest of the year. And if he sees midfield minutes, then that could even be potentially closer to 100. So... I really like Houston as an option. Ollie Wines, you're paying pretty much full price, but he is unique. He's in great form, so he could be one that you potentially go with instead of a Tom Mitchell type, like I mentioned earlier. Lockie Whitfield, same thing. Will be super popular, though, this week. Lots of people look like they're jumping on board. There was a rumour that he was running laps at training during the week, but I can't seem to find a source for this, so I don't know how much credit there is behind that. And if so, he could just be running laps to build his fitness base. He is still coming off that injury, so I don't think there's too much concern here. Hopefully, he is just building his fitness, and if he is, that's probably a better thing for fantasy coaches as He'll look to be playing more game time in the second half of the year. So I'd be jumping on Whitfield if that's the guy that you like this week. The next two guys are two options that I also recommend jumping on. We have Aaron Hall, Josh Kelly. I think Josh Kelly, if you don't own him, he's the number one target this week. Into the midfield, 111 average over his last uh, three to five games. So... He's going to continue to put that sort of scores out there, and he looks to be the number one forward. So he's still at a buy price. He isn't as much value as he was, but I'd still be getting on board. Same thing for Aaron Hall. He's pricey now, but defender forward status, he will be a top six in one or both of those zones. So he's worth owning, even at the price. 
His scoring's been ridiculous. Off the top of my head, he's probably averaging around 120 over his last five games. So I think that he's still an option. And then the last two, we have Isaac Heaney. I just wanted to mention Heaney as what seems to happen is a lot of guys get on these players late. And then the next week when it is too late, People that are late to the party still seem to jump on board. So I just wanted to mention Isaac Heaney quickly as I don't think he's an option this week. Last week was the last week to get on. So if you don't own him, I wouldn't be jumping on board now. And I just want to mention someone that's on the buy quickly. I will be talking about them in more depth to come next week. But that's Kyle Langford. I think that he will be a guarantee in the midfield for Essendon. So I think he's also a super option. So the number one priority this week, guys, is you want to be trading in, guys, coming off the buy. My top five targets this week, Josh Kelly, Lockie Whitfield, Dan Houston, Ollie Wines, and Nick Haynes. That's my top five targets for this week. What you should be doing with your trades is trying to get your structure right. If you're heavy in round 14 buys, Potentially look at trading some of those guys out this week. So your James Jordan, Burns, Chad Warner, James Rowe. If you can move these guys on, then that's ideal. Chase those upgrades and make sure that your structure is right for next week also. So there you have it, guys. That's my round 13 trade talk. A bit longer than usual, but during the buys, there's so much going on. There's so much to cover. There's plenty of guys that are at value prices now and guys to look out for. So I wanted to do a bit of a longer video as a lot of you guys seem to be struggling with what you should be doing with your trades during this period. I've just given you my thoughts on what rookies to target, what premiums to look at. So I hope this has helped you. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content if you're struggling with your trades this week, let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you to try and help you out with your trade situations. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She